Yeah. How social impacts as well, though, because it impacts in the legal system, it impacts in society and people's behaviour. And, you know, as we've seen now, you know, obviously the present political situation, how it massively impacts every little thing, uh, really. Obviously, what has occurred with information, communication, technology, is the costs, the distribution of supplies, we drastically change every little thing. And when, uh, going back to being digital, if you remember, uh, Don Rose got the hacker crackdown, as well as there's some literature, some literature, literature uh, from the 90s. Well, so, and all, obviously, the virtual reality, the metaverse, and obviously artificial intelligence and machine learning as well. But we've seen the release of products, uh, obviously, we've got the new Intel chip, we have you know, the increasing standards from PCI4 and DDR4 to PCI5 and DDR5. You know, DDR goes back to the 90s, right? Like, and obviously there's various technical specialisms on the server side. We're hosting cloud virtual machines. And there's also a historic legacy about how uh, the internet works with TCP, IP and hypertext. Uh, obviously there's Apache. You know, we have all the different types of operating systems, so, and we have all the different software. And in particular, we have the digital production skills, so that's something we've always concentrated on in the various materials projects. And obviously, the software tools that make that work. You know, like obviously, today we're uh, spending more and more time learning the Adobe Creative Cloud. Again, so you've got a whole suite of software tools there. Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, Adobe AI. Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, and uh, the After Effects for camera work, stuff like that. And it all integrates to an integration. And they have also the, the web experience tools, the Adobe XT. Well, there's Adobe Dream, we've offered creating websites, what have you. It's got a heck of a lot of software capability. So, managing all this complexity, we're going to need the server operating systems like Linux for a server, Ubuntu server, Ubuntu desktop, or Linux Fedora server, and then a Linux Fedora desktop or a Red Hat. There's a bunch of stuff in there as well as the operating systems. We've got the intellectual property where you really can call it a Unix or a Linux. And uh, obviously, have Microsoft and then obviously Apple as well, a uh, massive tech company as well. So, it really bridges all the sorts of sciences or laws, as it were. Uh, we have just, you know, a purely creative world, and obviously a massive world of media, uh, television, radio, uh, uh, internet live streaming, uh, uh, video game live streaming, obviously social media and stuff like that. So this, uh, so yeah, we're entitled to uh, talk uh, channel news and the cost of C++. C++ uh, is kind of like a generic standard of every little thing, but really, uh, you really need to blow the lid off every single piece, every single component part of the puzzle, uh, the wide wide structure. But also realise there's really, really simple mathematical structures or mathematical models that, that are behind everything. And uh, obviously there's a lot of figures. There's every little thing inside of it, uh, really. Obviously there is a bit of an elitism about C++, uh, what have you. There's a massive amount of mythology and, and the rest of it. Obviously, uh, that's its own particular, you know, history and culture. Again, the massiveness of uh, 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 all these varieties of, you know, it's, it's a creative field, uh, and there's all kinds of sort of like perspectives on it. It really depends on who you are as an individual. Like right? if you're like a pure mathematician, then a computer is obviously the art. Right, you know, a geometric device that does mathematics and obviously if you need 3D graphics the software side and the hardware side that you know, it comes about modeling 3D geometry and animation and uh, if you're an artist then you're going to want to look at stuff like Adobe Creative Cloud uh, and obviously your computer, your personal computer plugs into 3D printers, normal printers, printing presses uh, and there's all sorts of CAD CAM and uh, all CAD, CAD, CAM, uh, CNC, computer control, 
Uh, and obviously, now we've seen a few uh, calls for smartwatch and uh, obviously we'll have the smart phone. But now we're going to the smart home. We also know about all these uh, internet things, devices that are connected to the internet. And of course, you've got to bridge the gap between all these component parts. For example, cameras, microphones, radio, the Wi Fi, and Bluetooth dongles, for example, touchscreen, uh, battery, uh, and uh, Obviously, you have 3D scanning and capability. Now, although it was modern mobile phones, you're using it for real time 3D scans as it, as it helps build virtual reality models. So, you can really identify C as the interconnecting point, as a central point on the map, where car engines, 3D printers, sensors, uh, uh, where self driving cars, GPS and LiDAR, etc., all coincide. And it's a space where your hard disks go wrong and central process you become combining them into a workable whole. Right, so some of those things, obviously, what it really is, is a logical language spell that can save all this incredible complexity in, in some sort of human usable format, but also still achieve technical and engineering principles as well. So it's Basically, it's very, very, uh, the pinnacle of the game is it, it, extremely complex at the pinnacle level. So a lot of people are completely non-productive when it comes to this sort of thing. You're probably much better off using a 3D model tool like Blender. You're probably much better off using Adobe Creative Cloud uh, to get things done. A lot of people just a lot of time, spend a lot of time learning, there's a difficult learning, like you know, the obstacles to learn and stuff like that. I don't really see the, develop, the development itself during the process. So you can get really, really, you can get lost in the weeds, you can get out there on the tangent and not really come on with anything. Uh, well, apart from just doing it for the uh, knowledge base, like learning. Oh, you've got to look at it uh, this way, you're probably better off using VST plugins uh, in Ableton, for example, rather than programming your own. I, uh, a lot, there's a lot, there's many, like, many individual projects out there, so you can look on the web, like, you know, like the GitHub source forge, there's many open source projects out there, go get the Linux kernel source code and have a look. Uh, all the providers give it Intel, uh, ARM, AMD, all the pretty close when it comes to this stuff, obviously, obviously Google, Android, SDK. So, it's cool to say that there's many, 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 many layers to the structure, and that's C++, so every system so is something somewhere on top, is the code, like it's like a code interface to it all, uh, and it's usable, it's useful and, and can be applied in creating tools on the one hand, so we can actually create your application itself, virtual worlds, and a uh, variety of user experiences, and a variety of specific individual tools and tool sets that obviously enhance productivity and get a lot of work done. And so the code itself is only one way we really interacting with it all, and we have to be careful not to get too sort of like lost in the thickest of it all uh, often times when people come to C++ they shouldn't really right so it's, it's all probably not really best for anyone if you're told in the abstract although it has its own hype and it has it always all uh, you know follow it you'll find that they all do but you can you know sometimes you can see way more way more use uh, Adobe Greenleaf it's doing Java it's you know, JavaScript CSS or whatever and that's where the creative and productive side can really get going. So it's a certain mental process that will do to call itself and interpretate it. It's another thing to be have that human touch where you can create great software products, software tool chains, where it's the digital studio called the Android developer, etc. And you can see all tech companies are kind of competing uh, for the customer's attention really, and, and, and there's a bit of a platform war going on. There's slight conflicts here, little mismatches here and there. And you know, for, for, for most, most people don't really want to go into this fundamental mathematics uh, of it all. Uh, and you can get by, actually, this whole, you know, whole new way of thinking 
Durch die Tauf, ich bin fertig, die mich hier melden. Das war uns gut. So ist es immer mit dem Haskell. Das ist eine neue Idee. Und es ist wohl was Schlimmes. Wir sind immer nicht ganz frei, weil ich kann nicht mehr über Expressions in der Öl. Und es gibt auch Schluss, wenn ich mich nicht mehr über die Sprengtechnik so nicht. Ich bin mal ein Arbeit für mich. Ich bin mit dem Typ 25 Jahre alt, das ist ein Hohen, das ist ein Schwer. So, wenn du kommst, du kannst nicht wirklich, 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 du kannst nicht Maybe 10 years to find its way into it for whatever particular reason. You really better off just leaving that there for now. And actually, going back to so it's one of the principles of the basic theory project we saw at the end, you know, when you know, we ended the year and you know, we finished it at the start of all, where you kind of say, really, what you really want to be asking yourself if you're serious, forget about learning C++ and what it is. You know, do you have a living, breathing software product that has a user base, uh, is relevant? It's present, uh, it's contemporary, and, and is it something that people will pay money for? And that's really the goal. Like, you may have the mentality that you can become the world's best C++ pro, or you know, the skills that you may help you find a job. So that, that kind of is the wrong sort of space to be approaching it, approaching it from. I believe if you want to, you want to be approaching it from that, you have a living, breathing problems. That's fun, like Google App Store, Microsoft Store, you know, Apple Store is available. Uh, there's a Ubuntu package on the Ubuntu Snap Store. And that's really, that other skill set, like, is, is really where it's at. Because 99.99% uh, of people out there, uh, that's really what the issue is in uh, all the stuff about C++ you don't really get to see it. It's the same with uh, Microsoft Windows Active Directory, you know, with a cloud. You don't really get ever to see it in the real world, how it really works. Like by coming in at it, so you're coming in this part from the position that you've got to personally develop yourself. Uh, that's all good and well, and you're going to spend, you know, like any given Sunday, you might spend a few hours working on a project, you could be an indie game developer, etc, etc. We really need to understand that, for the most part, economically, in the industry, there's already a pay for product out there with your user base, it's familiar, it's contemporary, that people are paying for, for the most part. Uh, because all of the stuff you learn about, you know, your book fixing, and version management, uh, updating, uh, metrics, there's a massive part of it. Obviously the security and stuff like that, you, you might not get, get to see unless you, you have a software on a domain. Well, there's no first private network access where you may not actually get to see it. So you may not get to see the real truth behind the say, say Microsoft server. So, so you've run several different locations on the back of it, perhaps several, several hundred computers in each, so different geographical locations, same with the network with one and VPN through it, so you the room protocols and stuff. If you like that, times like that, timing becomes key. And obviously, there's also the remote management sort of side of things, there's also people who get, uh, you know, to get used to the job because then you create a unique tool to help them do that job in particular. And if you see, you can see particularly in Windows Server versions, for every version of Windows Server released four way back, the first time I encountered it was Windows Server 2003. Uh, you, your individual practitioner gets, can do more and more. So it's enhancing the workload of any individual practices of Windows Server for commercial reasons, for the business side of things. Alright, so you've got to be careful. Yeah, you can always be an, an, an eternally, eternally a C student, like, or whatever, and you know, there's always new stuff to find out and the rest of it. But then again, there's also basic practical experience as well. The knowledge side of it, the academic side of it, and in particular the math bias, uh, there's a lot of really interesting math behind it that amplifies throughout the whole thing. Like, 
Well, if my eyes can be, it would be interesting symmetry between the different areas of mass, and then there's what will happen with the models. There is a model coming from, anyway. Uh, so, how far do you want to take yourself to develop in terms of academics? So you go for a, 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 a qualification, a master's degree, a PhD in mathematics, or you know, there's all sorts of interesting stuff. But also, there's all sorts of aspects of commercial reality. As well, obviously, not a lot of everything is good. You know, for example, you know, if you're a bank, you don't want the whole entire world to access to your server. But if you're a crypto or blockchain, then yeah, you do. Right, so just all sorts of things. Well, or we support Linux customers for games, but hardly anybody on Linux buys games. So it's kind of not worth it economically. Or like, you're going to get 99% of your problems are going to come from less than 1% of your customer base. So there's also still issues behind, uh, well, I think that's a lot of that. Obviously, you can, you know what, we're going to program, I'll program it in C++, and then we'll start to go into the emergency story and find competent developers that have the ability to hit the project running. They may know C++, but they might not know everything else. Uh, it's something that, but he recommended it's got back to C++ ASAP as simple as possible for a program we're working on that we're on the channel. It's, it's, it's better to, you know, how we can complete products. And even if it's a hello world bundle, it was like online, it's good on the Ubuntu, for example, you can create your own little stat on the store. But once it's the then you can push the next version. Uh, and the next version will be more complex online. The next version has to have a more complex a window. The next version can be more complex and be a mini ferry application. The next version has to have can be much more complex and have multiple installation components. Uh, for example, if you're on the Adobe Creative Cloud, there's literally more than 100 individual parts that pop up. Uh, all sorts from license checking to back up to cloud. It's quite a, so the software complexity comes from, you can have a simple file, you double click it, then you have a file of many threads, and then you can have many clients to entire architectures, and then you can puff up your deployment in terms of your application. You can have a variety of subspaces taking care of each individual area of demand, and a background metric system as well for, for underlying metrics. As a business, it's important to see statistics and data, so you get it's important for that to be as accurate as possible in business. That's probably the most important thing about you know, data science is accuracy. Because uh, most computer cycles, you know, it's, uh, you know, I've always been tuned to it, you can amplify mistakes quickly, but I've always said faults in the kernel can amplify to faults in the app, and then apps can amplify to faults in the user space. They can have amplify faults out of the areas in the underlying chip or operating system as well, that perhaps. So it's not necessarily always in C. Sometimes it's a build, sometimes it's a runtime, sometimes it's a chip. You know, there's all sorts of oddities occurring. Alright, so you know in C is the number of so in a you know, it is, it is the one of the intersection between all these component parts, whether it's power supply electronics. All the way through to run. And the great thing about it is it's, it's all holographic in that we can, uh, we have a little desktop PC, whatever graphics card, uh, new Intel 12th gen, 32 year run. But we can also use this computational capability in a specialist way. And we can make a product with ourselves, our Google designing car engines, etc., etc., etc. So it kind of phase shifts so or kind of like time warps into the next sort of like project workflow is different data or at least handed over to different applications and different development processes and the operating system context which is what you need to sell like that and obviously this is a very real manifestation of the computer and that's physical it requires electricity it requires a network cable graphics card ram keyboard, mouse, or game controller, uh, graphics tablet, you can put cameras into it, sensors, uh, robotics, we're looking at Raspberry Pis with these ro robotic Arduinos and what have you, a little bit of AI on board, and obviously drones and quadcopters as well, you can't do what they do, part of the computational plasticity, so it's 